Welcome to our Section 3 Single Types Memory Palace walkthrough. As always, consider these section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. But if you're still on board, let's recap our last episode. We met a unicorn billiards hustler and her friend, a 5-foot centipede with 13 broken arms. I know. Now that unicorn was stuck in one heck of a financial predicament until her centipede friend there suggested two for one root beer float and he was buying. Problem solved. Then we moved on to another story and we learned about a spooky evil situation where the devil himself challenged the Grim Reaper to a fiddle off. But the Grim Reaper was armed with the soul of an amazing fiddler boy from Georgia and he gave that devil a whooping he'll never forget. So now, get ready to continue our amazing adventures as we explore more of our Python Memory Palace. Up now. Stay tuned. Don't change the channel. Etc. Welcome back. For our next story, we don't have to go too far. Let's just get a little closer here on this pool table. I want to tell you a story about a nervous plate of hash browns. Now, this plate of hash browns has been a longtime science professor, and he is practicing to give a very complex speech about the problems that quantum mechanics poses for classical Newtonian theories. Now, he's getting pretty nervous because his big speech is tomorrow morning, and the hash brown needs a way to get into a triangle shape to demonstrate some of the subatomic examples. But you know, he can't because he's just a plate of hash browns. And he usually comes out of the kitchen each morning in some kind of roundish but amorphous blob type shape, never in a triangle. And he needs to be in a solid triangle. Plus, the shape he's in also can depend on his serving size in the morning, which varies a bit too, so he's nervous, to put it mildly. If he doesn't come out of the kitchen as a hash brown in a triangle shape tomorrow morning, his speech isn't going to go well. And just to be clear, hash brown people don't really die when they get eaten. They just get eaten and then they show up again the next morning for breakfast. Now, however, they can die, but that's not how they die. They don't die by getting eaten. But lucky for him, one of his favorite cooks was walking by. So this hash brown professor called him over to the pool table and said, Hey, you're one of my favorite cooks. Could I chat with you for a minute? Sure thing, he says. And then after the hash brown's done, explaining the situation to the cook, the cook says back to him, Don't worry. Tomorrow morning after I'm done cooking you, I'll put you inside of this triangle-shaped pool rack and I'll make sure that you're made of enough proportions to fill it to the top. It'll be like when you have a cookie sheet and then you stamp out shapes, except it'll be with hash browns and you inside of it, and the shape will be the triangle that you desire. And this hash brown professor was so happy. He can now focus on his speech and making sure that he explains these quantum mechanics. Now let me walk you over here to this skee-ball table because this skee-ball table is pretty special in the fact that it's also the home of a duck. A mom duck with a whole bunch of little ducklings. And they like to walk right up this little ramp, always in sequential order with the mom duck at the front and then the other ducks in a nice linear sequence. And when they get to the front, they can enter the home through any of these holes, the 10, the 40, the 100 even. But the mom is teaching them to only go in the hole that corresponds to the number of cute things that they did throughout the day. And, oh, what's this? We happen to just catch them coming home. Looks like there's some drama. Let's listen in. Quack, 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 quack. Okay, I'll translate for you. The mom duck's mad because the kids didn't keep track of how many cute things they did. So she says, just go in whatever hole you want today. But remember tomorrow. So all of the ducks go in their little holes, whatever ones they want today, which is a rare occurrence. Now come on over here where Morpheus from The Matrix is feeling super badass like he always is. And he just has met Neo. Neo and him are meeting for the first time right here. And Morpheus says with like a sinister, cool voice, he says, Neo, you take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the whack-a-mole goes. 
Neil points to the red pill, and then he opens his hand but accidentally drops it, and he kind of feels like a fool because it hits the side of his foot and then bounces underneath the dumb machine. So he gets down on his knees, and Morpheus is like, dang, it's out of reach. And then Neo's like, I got a pen. Maybe that'll give you a little bit of extra reach, and then you can get it. And Morpheus says, give it to me. I will try. He gets it. It's just the right length, and he gets the pill out from under the machine, hands it to Neo, and they both turn into the Matrix. Everything becomes like numbers, ones and zeros falling, and they disappear along with the whack-a-mole machine. It's all gone. Was it an illusion to start with? Possibly. Possibly. So with all this stuff now missing, let me direct your attention over here to a bartender who's been here for a number of years, and he's talking to a nice young man. And these two clowns that were hired several years ago to play the trumpet. Now, they move real slow, but they are alive, and they play the trumpet really well. Now, the bartender's been chatting with this nice young man for hours. He's, like, waiting for his uh, flight, and he's just hanging out. And he says... You know, what's the story with these clowns? They, they seem pretty good. They're, they're not playing the trumpets right now, but he was listening to them earlier, and they were great. And the bartender says it's the funniest thing. You know, they hired all three of us here at this bar, but those two clowns stopped talking almost one year ago to the day. And I don't know why. They play their trumpets. They sleep but they never talk anymore. And they used to be really funny. The guy on the right, he was a little dirty for my taste, but he had his moments. And the guy on the left, man, he always had a good story for everyone. So I'm really not sure. I mean, they seem happy, but I just haven't heard them talk. Then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the clown on the left taps the shoulder of the clown on the right and points over to where the whack-a-mole machine was and points at a dictionary that was underneath the whack-a-mole machine that has just been revealed. A dictionary sitting right there on the ground. And then the clown on the right says the first thing that he said in over a whole year. He said, oh my heck, there is the dictionary. There it is. And they both start laughing and they start chatting up a storm. And the bartender says, this is amazing. The bartender turns to the two clowns and said, why? Why have you been silent for the past year? And the clown closest to him looks up, and he says, Well, we wanted to talk, but without our dictionary, we were at a loss for words. Finn. Subscribe to the New Monic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.